Okay, this video is going to look at how you can extend the Rube layer that comes with the Cocoa Studio sample project to make your own layer to load a Rube scene into Cocoa Studio with images. So this is the second part in a um, two-part series of videos. Uh, the last video was kind of long and very detailed and we didn't actually load any images so it wasn't very useful in a practical manner. Uh, but hopefully this video is going to uh, show a little bit more useful version of events. So I have in this uh, folder here, I have the Cocoa Studio sample project and I have a picture here just to uh, show you what I'm going to do. This is a picture of a Humvee that I found on the net and I'm going to make a little car scene with this one. And so I've taken the wheel and the chassis and I've just separated them into two pieces that will be put onto separate bodies. Um, in this video I'm going to go through th things pretty quickly, basically as quick as I can, and if you need to look at any details uh, you can basically just look at the the first video in the series, we'll, we'll cover everything I think. So in Xcode we make a new project, and I'm going to start with a box 2D project there, and I'm going to call it Cool Hummer. And I'm going to save it alongside all those files there. And first thing I'm going to do here is come in here and I'm going to delete the box 2D stuff and I'm going to move it to trash because I, I don't need any of those files at all. Now, uh, okay, we have our project folder here. And we need to replace those box 2D files, obviously. And I'm going to grab them from subversion this time, so uh, let's try this one here, source code checkout. Uh, we can just basically copy the whole thing there as it is and come into terminal <coughs> and in terminal we need to change into that folder and run subversion to check it out. Check it out. There you go. All right, so quit terminal, and now we can see we have another folder up here, and we'll go in here and grab this one, and we'll bring that into our cool Hummer project in the libs folder. Uh, hold on a second. I thought we got rid of this. All right. Let's try again. Paste that in there. And then over here, we're going to put this into the libs folder of our project. And we want to do that. Create groups, yes. And this is going to cause some problems because, um, for example, the GLES render is not set up to use uh, some new things in the new box 2D. And one of those things is b 2 debug draw has been renamed, so I'm going to search for all occurrences of that and replace it with b 2 draw. And what else can we do? Hello world layer, we don't need that. We're going to ditch the hello world layer. And we'll move that to the trash. We're going to replace that with uh, some files from the uh, sample project. Uh, so, let's do that. Come into the Cocoa Studio sample project and we have some files in here that we're going to need to use. Uh, one is this Rube stuff, Rube stuff folder with all the B2DJSON files and we also need Rube layer. This is the main class that we're going to extend to make our own uh, layer and Rube layer extends basic Rube layer so we need that and we also need a few other supporting files which are Rube image info and query callbacks. So I'm going to copy all these into my cool Hummer project into main folder and I'm going to put the Rube stuff into the supporting files folder and I've been having trouble with this, so 
there's a bug in Xcode that when you switch one of these and finish, it seems like the next time you come back to this dialog, this add to targets is unchecked. Very annoying. Anyway, uh, finish. And we also need to add those other files, which were rube layer, image info, query callbacks, and basic rube layer. So those are going to go into the main part of the project. See? Look at that. It's not checked. Damn it. Xcode is garbage. And I'm going to do this again, just to make sure those work properly. Uh, OK, so finish. And that's all the files that we need to add for source code. And we need to go around and fix up a few things, because this rube layer class has was actually part of the the other project that we pulled it out of and there's a few things in there like this uh, setup menu layer and um, just things that we don't need so basically we don't need that and we don't need what else don't we need basically anything to do with this examples menu layer here we go, we can get rid of that, and we can get rid of this, we can actually get rid of this whole method. And also anything to do with hello world we're going to have to change as well, aren't we? So instead of using the hello world layer we're going to be using the rube layer, and that means we're going to have to change this here as well. Well, this part here we're actually going to change to our class that we create to extend the rube layer in a minute, but just to check if we've got everything compiling okay. Uh, we can put that in there like that and as I mentioned before the GLES uh, where's it gone? oh this one this one's going to have some problems as well um, draw transform I think just to save time we, we, we just get rid of that we don't really need any of it you can check in the previous video to see what you can do to fix that if you like uh, okay, so I'll try compiling this and hopefully we've got everything organized. <coughs> oh. oh, okay. Sorry, I was waiting for the uh, the simulator to start, but we didn't run it, we just clicked, uh, we just built it. So anyway, it's built without any errors. Might as well run it and see if we've see if we've uh, really got it working properly. And okay, nothing happening, but you can see from the FPS counter that it's running and that there are no crashes or anything. Right, now we need to get on with uh, extending this class and making it our own basically, making our own one of it. So what we need to do is extend this and we can do that by adding a file to the project which is an Objective-C class and this is going to be called Hummer Layer subclass of Rube Layer, okay? Targets is checked. <laughs> and then we put this in our main folder with all the other source code files and first up we need to make this a .mm file because we're going to be using box2d uh, we're going to be using C++ with it okay and there's nothing in this file at the moment but what we need to do to customize it or begin to customize it is we need to override this method that returns the the scene instance and we also need to at least well if we wanted to use images.json we could leave it as it is but we're not going to use that file so I'm going to override this method as well and bring those into my Hummer layer like that and instead of rube layer we are going to use Hummer layer and instead of images.json we are going to use hammer.json, which does not exist at the moment. So that's the next thing we need to do. I'll open up the rube editor and get rid of 
those windows there and I will create a new scene and I will add a body with a square fixture duplicate it and then I will make this one large like this and this is going to be the ground so it's going to be a static body and I'll just put this up here a little bit and down here we'll put a body this is going to become the wheel eventually so we'll give it a, a square fixture and I'll just save this file and I'll put it in my cool Hummer project in the resources folder here and I'll call it Hummer Rube. This file doesn't actually get used by the iPhone app when it's running. This is just the the program uh, the file that the editor saves. Um, but I find that it's easier to keep it in this resources folder because then the paths to the images are the same when you're loading the JSON as they are when you're loading the Rube. So I'm going to put it in the resources folder. And then we need to also export the actual JSON file that the program is going to load, which is also going to be called hummer.json and is also going to be in the same folder. Okay, now back in Xcode, now that we do have a hummer.json file, let's see if we can load it. And that did not work. Oh, I think I know why. We didn't add it to the project, did we? Okay, so could not open images JSON for reading. Now why are we using images JSON? Because we're still using the Rube layer. So <laughs> uh, back in app delegate we need to say that instead of using Rube layer we're going to use our own class, Hummer layer. And we also need to import that, of course. Um, and we need to add that Hummer JSON file to the project and we'll put it into the resources folder there. Where is it? Resources. Hummer JSON, okay? JSON, right? Not Rube, JSON. And we put that into the file and we double check that this is checked. See? Finish. And then we run it again. Now we should see that scene. Okay. And you'll notice that because Rube layer extends basic Rube layer, we have this uh, drag and drop, or not drag and drop, what is it? Drag mouse joint to drag things and throw them off the top of the screen. Uh, so that's quite handy to, to get things set up quickly and uh, you can ch check things out pretty easily like this. Right, so it's not much of a scene. Uh, we want to put a car in here, and while we're at this point, I think I'll actually force the app to be in landscape and also to realize the fact that it's in landscape as well. So this just makes things easier for me when I'm doing the video. So I'm going to come into the uh, oh yeah, targets uh, landscape right. I'm going to check that one, and in the app delegate on did finish launching. I don't totally understand why this is necessary, but I've found that it is, so uh, we need to say, oops, window set root view controller, view controller, like that. So just check that's okay. That should force it to be landscape left, which is uh, better, okay. Alright, so Let's actually start making a Hummer then, because we've called this Hummer.json. This is just a box and a circle in there. So back over here, uh, I need to use these images that I have. So Hummer chassis and Hummer wheel. Uh, first, I will copy those into my projects resources folder, and I'll put them into. I'm going to put them into a folder called images just to keep everything organized nicely. And then I'm going to drag these into Rube from that location. And I will also <coughs> drag in the original file here that has everything um, in the right places just to use as a template to get the positions correct. 
And before I forget, let's also tell Xcode about those images. Uh, where are they? Uh, resources. Images. Uh, I'm going to drag this whole images folder in here. And this is actually necessary. So you people at the back there, pay up, uh, pay attention. Uh, you need to drag the images folder, if you're using a subfolder to load the images, that is, of course. Drag this folder in here, and when you're asked this, this when this dialog comes up, you need to actually select Create Folder References for any added folders. And what that does is it makes a little blue folder here instead of an, a yellow one for a group. And that means that uh, the images will be found correctly when they're searched for by a path by this rube layer loading class. So if you find that your image is not being found, you may have forgotten to make that setting like uh, a blue folder. OK, so that should be OK. Now let's do something interesting here. Um, this image is going to go onto this body and it's going to go at 0, 0 in that body's frame of reference which should bring it to the center of the body because the default size for images and circles are both 1 so that's kind of convenient. Uh, the other images, let's bring those over. Uh, I'll start with this one because we want to put this point on this wheel in the middle of that one and then we want to scale it so that they're sort of about the same scale roughly and then we want to bring this one over here I'm just using this as a template for now to get things in the right place um, and I'm going to set up this point on this image and I'm going to move it to the same point on the larger image there so it's going to be like that and then I'm going to stretch it based on that point not moving so you can see the Rube tutorials if this probably doesn't make sense if you haven't seen those but uh, you can then scale like this um, what happened there? So it's a bit sluggish sometimes because I'm recording this over the network again, so I'm using VNC to view my Mac screen. That's why it's uh, kind of choppy like this. Don't worry, it'll be smooth when you use it. Uh, okay, so that's in the right position. Now I can ditch this template image, and I can get my body over here, and I can start to do something a little bit more interesting than a square like this and and then I, mean I can go like this and just sort of roughly lay out where I want the vertices for this car to be so that will do for that and uh, next thing I want to do is join the two bodies together with a wheel joint. So I'm going to choose this one first to be body A. That's going to be body B. B, B. And we're going to add a wheel joint. So now I have a joint here. And then I'm going to duplicate this body, which will duplicate the joint as well. And I'm going to bring it over here. Uh, it doesn't adjust the joint anchor for me though, so I'm going to have to do that myself, like so. And then we can check in the player view to see what this looks like. Oh, let's turn fixtures on. So the joints are connected properly. Uh, we notice a couple of problems. We notice our first thing is that the car image is not attached to the car body and the other thing is if we load this a few times we'll see that each time it loads 
the rendering order of these images is kind of random. That's because they all have the same rendering order. So let's fix those things. Um, uh, image has to go onto the body, so this image goes onto that body. And then the rendering order of these images is going to be, I'll make it uh, say 10 for the car chassis and for the wheels we'll make it 20 so they'll be on top. And then we can check that. That's better. Uh, now we notice something else. Uh, because these two bodies are connected with joints they don't collide with each other. Uh, the default setting of collide connected for joints is to be false, but we would rather that these joints uh, cause the bodies to still collide. So I'll select those two joints and we'll say collide connected is true. We'll check that. Now when I pull down you'll see that the wheels can't go up inside the car body anymore. Right, now uh, we can export this scene and I can do that by hitting shift space because I already exported it before. It will just be saved to the same place and then we can run our app here and see what happens. Okay so the car is loaded in looks like everything's running uh, it's a bit small so next thing we can do is set the initial scale and the initial offset for this layer to make it a little bit easier to see and these come from the superclass so we can go back into our rube layer and I'll take these two functions here initial world offset and initial world scale and I'll copy those into my Hummer layer and scale is uh, at the moment 35 I would rather that this was a little bit smaller uh, we can see the car is about two meters high, or two physics units, I should say. So I'll make the screen for this one about six physics units high, and I'm basing it off, basing it this off the height. But you could use the width if you wanted to base this on the width. Um, okay, the initial world offset. There's a big, big, huge explanation there, but basically. It's the position on the screen that you want to be, where you want to place the zero zero point of the world. And I want to place the zero zero point of the world, which is just for uh, to make things clearer. The zero zero point of the world is this little red and green axis here. Uh, while I'm at it, why not also? Oops, that's not good. Bodies. I'll put this in the center as well. Okay, there we go. So now the car is above the zero zero point in the world. And we want this to be, I'm going to put this at the bottom of the screen in the middle. So that would be, x dimension would be half of the width. And the y dimension, or y coordinate rather, would be zero. So let's run that. Uh, it's still a little bit off because I forgot to export. Hold on. Export. Let's check that again. The car should be in the middle this time. Okay, so the car is in the middle. The scale has been set to something a little bit more easier to see. And everything looks good. Uh, so just before I finish up this video, this is basically... Um, uh, as far as um, the video needed to go but uh, I'll add a little bit more since you're already watching and if you've watched this far you're obviously interested in seeing this uh, so what we can do now is we'll find the joint for the rear wheel and when the user touches the screen we'll make the rear wheel spin and then that will make the car move and so we will also make the center of the view follow the car as it moves so we need to give the joint for the rear wheel a name in the scene. Come on, click. All right. <laughs> Sometimes it's very slow to change applications um, over VNC. 
so what was I going to do? Joints. This joint here, we will call this the rear wheel, and we'll enable the motor, and we'll say that the motor torque is 10. It should be motor torque. Yep. Uh, motor speed. I'm just going to leave this as zero because the program will be controlling this anyway, so it doesn't make any difference what we set it to here. Uh, okay, and export that. Come back into Xcode. Now we need to get a reference to that joint after we load the scene. So we're going to need to. Um, First thing we're going to need to do is in our Hummer layer, in this class, we're going to have to have a class member variable to put the joint into. So I'm going to call it b2 wheel joint m. Uh, what is this? Rear wheel joint. Okay. And from the Rube layer superclass again, we're going to go in here and we're going to look at the afterload processing method. I'm going to copy that and bring that into my Hummer layer. And we're going to add, let's have some more space here, shall we? So after the load processing, we are going to, very importantly, call the superclass to get all the ordinary loading done. And then we're going to say that our rear wheel joint is the joint in the scene that is called joint by name rear wheel. All right, and I think what's this incomplete type? Oh, that just means that we it doesn't know what a B2D JSON is, so we need to include that, don't we? B2D JSON H, yes. Okay, now that we have a reference to the joint, we want to set the motor speed of that joint when the user touches the screen. So back in Rube layer, actually, no, it's not in there, it's in basic Rube layer. I'm just going to come into basic Rube layer because I want to grab the method signature for touches began and bring that into my Hummer layer. So in this function here we are going to say rear wheel joint set motor speed um, and I'm going to set it to a large negative number because um, positive means counterclockwise so we want a negative number to spin it clockwise to make the car move to the right. And when touch is ended, we want to set that back to zero. So we, we get the joint there, and then we control it in these other two functions. Let's see if that works. OK, so you can see when I click on the simulator, the wheel is spinning, and it's quite low friction, isn't it? So let's just uh, give the wheels and the ground a little bit more friction. 0 0.5, say. Export that. Um, and I think since I'm here, I might just make it a little bit more interesting ground too, because we're going to be driving across the ground soon. So let's do this. So this lets me put some points in between here, like that. And I might just make a wall there so we can't drive off into nothing. OK, and export this. And back into Xcode. And I've forgotten what we were going to do. Oh, camera, yeah. So we'll notice that now when we run this, uh, we should have a bit more friction and some bumps to drive over. 
but we can't see what we're doing. So let's override the tick function of the layer to move the position of the view. Uh, tick. So let's copy to tick. And in the Hummer layer, we'll put that into our class. Somebody's riding a noisy motorbike outside. Um, okay, super tick. Of course, we need to do this. That's very important, isn't it? Otherwise, nothing will happen at all. Uh, so after the tick, we want to move the position of the layer, which is done like this: set point, uh, set position, CG point make, and then something. And the something is going to be based on uh, the position of the car, which we can get from the rear wheel joint and that has a reference to the body that it's con bodies that it's connecting and we want body A because I think that was the car and get the position okay so we can use this oh wait a minute a few things we need to do here uh, this is in physics units so we don't want physics units when we're sitting setting the position on the screen we want uh, pixel position, so we're going to have to multiply that by the scale of the layer. And another thing that we need to be aware of is that set position sets the position on screen for the zero zero point of the physics world. And if we just move with the, the same pos uh, the same direction as the car, the world is going to move to the right with the screen so it will look like nothing changes. What we really want to do is move the position of the layer to the left as the car moves right. So this is, that means we're going to have to use the negative of this. Um, and this is still not quite right because let me just put this in here x was this is still not quite right because it's going to place the body of the car at the very lower left corner of the screen. So to avoid that we can check out what the screen size is by using CC director shared director win size. Yeah. And we can add half a screen width to this uh, half of the screen width and then we can add half of the screen height so this will put the car body dead center in the middle of the screen fingers crossed let's see what that does okay so now the camera is moving along with the car touch is working to do nothing. <laughs> I should have kept going a bit faster there because I can't go backwards and I don't have enough friction. So just to uh, make sure that doesn't happen again in this video, I'll give the, those fixtures a lot of friction. Oops, uh, what do we here? Export. Let's go a bit faster this time. So you can see now the uh, camera is moving with the car. We've got lots of nice bumps and it really looks like a Humvee. I can't pick this up with the, the mouse anymore because when I overrided touches began I didn't call it super class but you could do that if you wanted to still drag things around in the scene. Okay so that's an example of using um, the files from the sample project to extend Rube layer to make your own layer and control some things in the scene with images. So I hope that was useful and uh, thank you for watching.